All right, so Diamond League event number two is in the books. Rob Pizzo, Morgan Campbell. We got a lot to talk about, including, of course, the Canadians. But you know where we're going to start. Men's 100 meter. Four of the top eight all time go in this race. We thought it was going to be just a huge marquee event because we were finally going to see it. Curly versus Jacobs. The fans wanted it. The athletes wanted it. The media wanted it. You wrote about it on cbcsports.ca. As soon as we post it, what do we find out? Jacobs has to pull out. I yes. wrote this down because I'm not a doctor. I want to make sure I get this right. Yes. On Twitter, he said, a lumbosacral nerve block was yes. keeping him from the race. First off, I almost, in my head, heard the Price is Right. Bum, 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 bum. Wow. <laughs> How disappointed were you when we didn't get this head-to-head -head matchup? Not very, not very disappointed, only because I'm a track nerd. And again, the head-to-head -head matchup really resonates with uh, the mainstream fans, the casual fans, yeah. the people that need recognizable names. So you recognize Fred Curley, you recognize his name because he's the most recent world champ. You recognize Lamont Jacobs' name because he's the most recent world champ. But we haven't seen Lamont Jacobs run full speed on the circuit over 100 meters in a long, 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 long time. So you don't know that that's a marquee matchup. That's a big name matchup. You yeah. don't know how fast he's running. We know Fred Curley's running fast because he ran 988 in Japan last week. Ferdinand Omaniala was in that race. We know he's running fast because he ran 984 in Kenya. You knew which way he was trending. So if you're just in it for the quality of the matchup, uh, you lost something not having Jacobs, but you're not quite sure how much you lost. Whereas if Omen Yala had to pull out, you you could be like, oh, geez, this matchup is diminished because we lost a 9.8 sprinter. Whereas Jacobs, he is still a question mark. So in terms of star power and mainstream resonance, yes, we lost a lot. In terms and social of, media battles. We yes, can't forget that, too. That put it on the, of, on the like, stage. The quality of the race, we don't know what Marcel yeah. Jacobs... Le Lamont Marcel Jacobs would have run. He might have run 9-9. He might have run 10-2. We don't know because we have not seen him in forever. This isn't the first time we're talking about Jacobs suddenly coming up with something in a race that features Fred Curley. Let me quickly go through it yes. here. Uh, in 2022, alone, uh, Kano Classic, intestinal problems. Pre-classic, uh, pre you had a muscle injury. In Rome, he had another muscle injury. At the Worlds, didn't want to compromise the rest of the season. People are starting to notice a trend. Hey, Curly's in the race, suddenly something hurts. I know it sounds like I'm trying to insinuate something here, Morgan, no. but is, is this fishy to you? I don't know. I'll tell you what's unusual about this particular one is that just the level of specificity in the in his description of the condition that's keeping him out of action. Like, when do you ever hear that in pro sports? You yeah. hear people say, I hurt my hand. <laughs> you don't hear a person say, yeah, I have a hairline fracture in the fifth metatarsal. And so what we don't know is if he's just really being honest or if he is trying to over explain um, his absence. Because the truth is any high level sport, uh, it's hard work getting that good, staying that good, staying that sharp. You pick up these little injuries. This is happens in basketball, happens in baseball, happens in football, happens in track and field. You know, each sprinter, especially at that level, is a little bit different. Some people can run at a super high level the whole season and their body kind of, hold, kind of yeah. holds up. Other people, they can't, and they have to save it for certain races. So Lamont uh, Jacobs might just be the person who really has to concentrate on peaking for certain races, because if he has to run 9-9 nine, nine and faster, like, Throughout a whole season, his body might fall apart. Maybe that's what he's heading towards. Can't go without talking about the Canadians. Sarah Mitten, Marco Arope, uh, both finishing fifth. And, and here's the reason I want to bring this up, too. Yep. They were the only two Canadians in Morocco. I feel like right now, track and field in this country is in a really, really good place. But Canadian fans are kind of uh, an interesting bunch. <laughs> when you're not really a known athlete and yes. you put up a mediocre result... It's parade time. This is great. Look what Sarah Mitten did. But now Sarah Mitten and, and Arope are putting up results in which expectations have shot through the roof. Are we looking right now at a Canadian track and field team that's that it's not just maybe one or two baskets? There are eggs in so many baskets, but they're going to deal with a lot of pressure because of it. In terms of the expectations, there's the expectations that people who don't watch a ton of track and field might generate because, again, they, they parachute in for the world championships. They see a Canadian on the podium, and they think it's like that all the time. For some people, it might be like that all the time. Uh, but, again, in track and field, just like any other sport, there's ebbs and flows, there's peaks and valleys uh, to your performance. But I think uh, the athletes themselves 
have an idea of how good they are, how good they can be, where they rank amongst their competition, who they can knock off, who they can uh, leapfrog. And when to peak for, right? And when to peak. Yeah. So if I watched World Championships last year and I had never watched track and field before, I saw Marco, I don't get a medal. And then I come back the next year and say, well, he ran 143 last year and my expectation that he's going to run 140. <laughs> Okay, that's my expectation. Yeah. It's not grounded in reality, but I don't might be like, well, I ran 143, I can run with 142. Maybe I can get into the 141s. These are more realistic expectations based on the work he does and the event that he's in. So there's expectations in terms of like what fans who don't watch a ton of the sport might concoct, but then there's realistic expectations. But realistically, there are a whole lot of Canadians across uh, a bunch of different events who are metal podium threats, and that's a great position to be in. So to recap everything, it's a good time to be a track fan in Canada. It's a good time to be a track fan, period. And it's a good time to have social media accounts because it does build up stuff like this. Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> Anytime. Okay, that's the end of the video, but you're not at the finish line yet because we've got plenty more content. And if you want to see it, subscribe to the channel and just look at all the videos you can watch. Morgan and myself talking track.